This is a set of Factor stencils invented in the 1920s by Derek Norman Lemur. My set has about a hundred little stencils with holes punched in them in some crazy pattern. Plus this other card that you lay on top. Here's the idea. Say you have some big number you want to factor. That means uh, figure out what the divisors are. You plug your big number into some crazy formulas. Those formulas tell you which stencils to use. You line them up, you read the overlay there, and those are your factors. Ha! D.N. Lemur was a well-known number theorist in the early 1900s who was really interested in prime numbers. In 1909, he published a book called Factor Tables for the First Ten Millions, which was a giant chart of the prime factors of every number up to ten million. Anyway, Lamer spent a lot of time making big lists of prime factorizations. Somehow during that process, he came up with the factor stencils. Lamer's original stencils looked like this. They're much bigger than mine. They were printed on these double-sized sheets of paper, and each sheet had 5,000 positions for the holes to be punched. And Lamer's set had about 500 sheets. Actually, these two photos here are from the Smithsonian. They're the only photos that I know to exist of the original set of Lamer's stencils. As far as I can tell, Lamer only made 50 sets, which were distributed to different universities in America. My set that I made is a lot smaller. Lemur's set of stencils was big enough to factor any number up to two trillion. I made mine smaller just so it'd be easier to make. Each stencil of mine has 200 positions for holes. Remember, Lemur's had 5,000. So Lemur's set can handle any number up to two trillion, but mine can only handle up to about 300,000. The holes are all the size of a standard hole puncher. I put a link in the description of a PDF you can print out and punch the holes yourself. Actually, that's a lot of holes to punch, so I got fancy. I borrowed this machine from my kid's preschool. This is a programmable paper cutting machine. You can make any vectorized design on your computer and then the thing will cut it for you. I had to label each of my stencils by hand and then I made this overlay stencil with the labels for each hole written in. Check it out, I also designed a notch in each card so that you can tell at a glance if they're in order. Smart! I haven't got a perfectly sized box to put them in. Now let's talk details here. My cards have 200 holes each and these holes are labeled with the first 200 prime numbers. Each card also has a big label on the side. This is a variable that Lemur called capital R. Now I'm going to tell you how to use these but it might be a good time to tell you right up front. The mathematical theory behind how these things works is pretty complicated. Anyway the punches go like this. You punch a hole at some prime number p when R is a quadratic residue modulo p. That means this. It's just something from number theory I'm not really going to get into. It's not too important to understand that if all you want to do is use the stencils. This would have been a pain for Lamer to do by hand. All these hole positions, you got to figure out if there should be a hole or not. But massive tables of the quadratic residues already existed, so Lamer would have considered this part to be easy. Okay, let's just say I want to factor this big number. I'll call that big N. This is going to sound absurdly complicated, but I swear this is how you're supposed to do it. You need to compute this system of recurrence relations. The idea is you do this in steps, and each step lets you compute a new value of these big variables, P and Q. There's also these little Qs, which, get this, the little Qs are the terms of the continued fraction expansion of the square root of N. Continued fractions are another weird thing from number theory where you take an irrational number and you write it as an infinite fraction like this. Yeah, I know it's crazy, but actually number theorists have been doing continued fractions for at least 500 years. Anyway, you find the continued fraction expansion of the square root of n, and then you plug all those numbers into these formulas. In each step, whatever you get for the big Q, you divide out all the square factors of that number. You multiply by negative one on the even numbered steps. Hey, you even listen anymore? Anyway, you do a bunch of weird stuff and each step you get a new R. I'll put a link down there if you wanna see the details. All right, so I'm gonna do this example, you ready? Now the formulas you plug into over and over involve adding, subtracting, and multiplying. This is the kind of stuff you could do by hand, but you wouldn't really want to. So I'm going to use my fancy calculator here. Now there's also the continued fraction expansion of the square root. That's also something you could do by hand, but I'm just going to do it on Wolfram Alpha. 
All right, start the clock. First time through is easy. We get Q2 equals 765. You make that negative and factor out the squares, we get R equals negative 85. So I get the stencil for minus 85. That's actually too big for my set, so we're out of luck in this step. Plug those formulas in again, I get Q equal 104. You divide out the four, you get R equals 26. So you find the stencil for R equals 26. Now at this point we know the divisors of our big number, whatever they are, they have to be one of these punched holes. It's kind of a lot of holes there. Right, so another R. R equals negative 303, that's too big. Do it again. Next time through we get R equals 30, that's a good answer. So I get the stencil for R equals 30 and I line them up. Now any possible factor of my big number has to be one of these, it's punched through. There's still 19 holes here, so let's do it again. Next time through, I get R equals negative 241. That's too big. Next, we got R equals 6. That's great. I get the stencil for R equals 6 and line it up. Now there's only nine possible factors left. Actually, we get a little lucky here. I didn't tell you this before, but if one of your R values divides evenly into another one of your R values, then you can use the quotient as another R value. So like here I had r equals 30, which is divisible by r equals 6. 30 divided by 6 is 5, so I get to take the r equals 5 card too. And now that I have 5, my first r value is negative 85, and negative 85 divided by 5 is negative 17, so I get r equals minus 17, 2. Line them up. Okay, now we're down to 6 possible factors. Let's see if we can do better. This time we get r equal minus 7, and now we're down to 3 possible factors. Let's do another step. We get r equals minus 67, which doesn't help. Do it again. r equals negative 15, and now we're down to two factors, 379 and 499. And I will invite you to check on your calculator. 379 times 499 is indeed that big number that we started out with. Later on in the 1930s, Lehmer and his son adapted this idea into a physical machine. The stencils were converted into strips that turned on gears. And the gears were arranged so that you could turn a crank to perform the arithmetic that I was doing in those steps. The stencils were also adapted in 1940 by Raphael Robinson into a fancier kind of stencil system that he called stencils for solving x squared equals a mod m but I'll leave that for another video. Factoring stencils are pretty neat, but it took me like 15 minutes just to factor that one six digit number. Why's it gotta be so complicated? Well kids, some things are just complicated and there's nothing you can do about it. Lamer spent his whole life studying prime factorizations and this was the best that he or anyone else in the world could do at the time. Actually, these stencils are a sort of culmination of Lamer's life's work and they fit in this little box here makes you feel something. This is how all advanced research works. A researcher goes to extreme lengths to discover and express their ideas. It often gets distilled down to just a few pages. But those pages, those little words, are packed with depth, with meaning, with beauty and power. And so it is with these stencils. The knowledge of a whole generation of number theory distilled down into a bunch of holes on paper. There's power there and beauty powerful beauty.